Hello friends, Dr. Marta Perez here. Welcome back to my channel where we discuss everything about pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Don't forget to hit subscribe, new videos every Friday. Today's video is on all the different types of OBGYN doctors. Okay, first, I'm just gonna go into the background about what it takes to become an OBGYN doctor. So an OBGYN is a doctor, which means they either have a medical degree, which can either be an MD or a DO. That requires pre-med courses in undergrad, four years of medical school, and then doing four years of residency training specifically in OBGYN. So when you're in medical school, you don't have a specific specialty yet. You choose that and you go to a residency. When you're in residency, you're actually practicing the medicine and working with patients under the supervision of more experienced doctors and you're being expected to learn all the subspecialties as well as well as additional like actual studying and learning. I personally did OBGYN residency and then I was a practicing OB for several years before I went to fellowship. General OBGYN is an expert in reproductive health. By the time you finish your residency, you have to meet certain criteria to graduate from residency. You have to meet certain criteria to obtain a board certification. And you're expected to know a lot of the following things. So one big aspect is actually preventative care. So many of us go to the OBGYN to get a pap smear and a yearly exam. Another aspect is dealing with gynecologic health problems, painful periods, heavy periods, pain with sex, pelvic pain, ovarian cysts, all of these are gynecologic health problems. And an OBGYN is the person that's going to evaluate, diagnose, and treat those gynecologic health problems. Contraception is a big part of OBGYN. I actually love talking about contraception, helping patients choose the right contraception for them or troubleshoot if they're having any side effects on contraception, etc. Obviously, pregnancy is a huge part of most OBGYN's job, taking care of someone through the prenatal period, doing their birth, being present at their birth, whether that be C-section or vaginal delivery, and then the postpartum period as well. And many OBGYNs are also managing people as they get to the far aspects of their reproductive lives, including menopause care and hormone replacement therapy, etc. So a general OBGYN really does a lot of different things. Um, and so it's a really diverse field and you really have a lot of experiences doing a lot of different things. Things, which is why a lot of OBGYNs and general OBGYNs really like their job. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some of the OBGYN subspecialties. Medicine is always changing and advancing so much throughout the decades. So some of these subspecialties evolved early because of the need for really advanced care in a certain realm. And some of them, as medicine is advancing, we're developing more subspecialties. I'm gonna talk about MFM first. It is one of the subspecialties that's a bigger subspecialty and it's my subspecialty. So obviously I'm gonna talk about it first. MFM stands for maternal fetal medicine. So this is a subspecialty where you're focused on the maternal and fetal medicine of obstetrics. So this can involve, you know, preconception care and postpartum care, but mostly involves the care during pregnancy and or around the time of birth. Some of the things that MFMs do is they are trained in high level ultrasonography and ultrasound guided interventions. So for example, if you are having your anatomy scan and the doctor is worried that there might be something different or abnormal about say the baby's heart or the baby's kidney or one of the brain structures, they're going to refer you to MFM to get a higher level ultrasound to get a better look at what's going on. The other thing that MFM does is specializes in complex maternal health conditions. So often I'm seeing patients either preconception, definitely during pregnancy, and after pregnancy a lot of the time, with conditions like diabetes, things like lupus, things like people who have had a prior heart problem themselves and then they wanna start a family or they become pregnant. Um, there's a whole wide range of maternal health conditions that can affect pregnancy that maternal fetal medicine doctors help take care of. So the combination of taking care of people who have complex maternal diseases and fetal conditions is a part of MFM. Of course, we also take care of people who are in the hospital because of a either maternal or fetal health condition. Some MFMs still deliver babies and some have sort of all their time taken up as what's called a consultant or working closely with general OBGYNs to guide the management and decision-making, but they may not be the ones doing the birth, the general OBGYN might. Okay, the next subspecialty I'm gonna talk about is I think the next most common one on social media that gets talked about, and I think people confuse me for, which is REI or reproductive endocrinology and infertility. REI are the types of subspecialty doctors 
doctors that trained specifically in reproductive endocrine and infertility problems. REI doctors evaluate and treat infertility. They also do some other stuff like advanced endocrine stuff and cryopreservation. REI doctors also evaluate some more advanced endocrine and fertility concerns. They also do things like help people who have cancer with cryopreservation, keeping their eggs healthy and evaluating fertility and fertility preservation in the face of cancer treatment. Now, fertility preservation among people who are not yet ready for children but want to reserve their fertility for later is an option. So those are the types of doctors that deal with getting pregnant or planning to get pregnant or if pregnancy hasn't worked out, trying to achieve pregnancy. The next subspecialty is gynecologic oncology. Gynecologic oncology is a subspecialty that many people, if you're around my age, you may not have heard of, and that's a good thing. They are cancer of the gynecologic tract doctors. So these doctors are the doctors who diagnose, evaluate, and treat ovarian, uterine, cervical cancers. They both do really advanced surgeries where they remove the pelvic organs and metastases of cancer, and they also manage the chemotherapy for these types of cancers. Their field is both medicine because many of them are managing the chemotherapy, some alongside oncologists, and it's very heavy, heavily surgical um, because they are taking out cancer that is often complex and maybe has spread to many organs, so they're pretty complex surgeons as well. The next one I'll talk about is something called complex family planning or CFP. Complex family planning is really like, I think a very cool and very interesting subspecialty to focus on because it is focused on both abortion and complex contraceptive care. People who have really complex situations, usually other medical health problems that can influence hormones, which are a lot of the ways we use contraception. It's a great subspecialty because although a first trimester abortion can be managed by really anyone with a minimal level of medical training because it's so safe and so easy. Some termination of pregnancy care is more complex. And because unfortunately there are laws preventing every general OBGYN in general OBGYNs in training from accessing and being trained in these procedures, the fellowships are there to help step in and make sure there's access to these types of more complex procedures. They also, again, unfortunately, but it is true, their fellowship has a huge uh, public health and advocacy slant as well, because the reality is, is that this type of medical care is targeted and it's not available for everyone. And there are many states in this country and many places where it is hard to get this care. And we have these experts who are really focused on advocacy and have preserving complete reproductive access for everyone. So while as some of the clinical skills absolutely should and could be available for every OBGYN, state laws and uh, restrictions on reproductive health make it harder to achieve. And so this fellowship has really stepped up to be the experts there in both advocacy and in the procedures and medical side. The next one is something called, it recently had a name change. So what it goes by right now is female pelvic medicine and reproductive surgery or FPMRS, but it used to be called urogynecology. And these types of subspecialist doctors are the ones that deal a lot with, well, they kind of do diverse things, but they deal a lot with disorders of the gynecologic and urinary tract together. Often, but not always, these problems come with age. So things like prolapse, urinary incontinence, they do pelvic pain. They do both medicine because there's a lot of non-invasive treatments for these problems and surgery intervene on these problems. And their field is really cool. Um, you see them working a lot really closely with pelvic physical therapists because again, it takes kind of a multimodal approach or many different treatments to treat some of these conditions. Again, these conditions tend to be more common as people age, but certainly young, young people have them as well. All right, and as I said, this field is like growing and expanding of subspecialty. So two of the newer subspecialties on the on the scene in OBGYN, one of them is called minimally invasive gyne surgery. Um, we sometimes call it MIGS. And these are advanced pelvic surgeons for people without cancer. This specialty is set up so that there is greater access to really complex, minimally invasive surgery for people with complex pelvic and gynecologic health issues. The biggest ones being really big fibroids and bad endometriosis. So that's kind of the bread and butter of this surgical subspecialty. And I think it's great that these surgeons are focused on these disorders, big fibroids and endometriosis, because these are types of medicine that haven't had 
the focus behind them because OBGYNs do so many different things and research. So you're really seeing this field bump up. We're learning more about endometriosis and both medical and surgical treatments for it as time goes on. There's a subspecialty called Peds and Adolescent Gynecology or PAG. And Peds and Adolescent Gynecology is really interesting. It has a few different focuses. One is that some people, just how some people are born without fingers or with their heart formed wrong. Some people's uteruses and vaginas aren't formed right at the time of birth and in childhood. Peds and adolescent gynecologists help with that. They also help with typical hormonal disorders or um, typical problems experienced by the pediatric and adolescent time period. Things like heavy bleeding, interacting with other subspecialists about the care of really complex medical children, the children who have a lot of different medical problems. Um, and so you're seeing that this is a smaller subspecialty, so you won't find it everywhere, um, but it's one that has a really interesting focus on this really great population of pediatric children and adolescents. The final thing I wanna say is that even though there are subspecialists, general OBGYNs have a really diverse set of training. And so there's gonna be overlap here. So I'm really a big fan of multidisciplinary medicine and people all working together so that everyone has the best care. I hope this video was like helpful and interesting. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next Friday.